What's going on, Halloween horror fans? I've got a list of some horror games for you. Oh, but these aren't games you should play. These are games you should absolutely stay away from, unless you're a self-loathing individual. And if you're looking for a little bit of punishment, well then let me help you out. We're gonna go over five games you should definitely stay away from this Halloween. We're starting off the list with a sweet name for a sweet girl, Amy. But that's as sweet as this game gets. Released on the Xbox 360, this game stars Lana, who is essentially a babysitter for a girl with special powers whose name is Amy. Okay, sounds kind of cool. Maybe it'll be something worth checking out. No, definitely not. Now here's where the old love for this game falls off a cliff and calls itself a day real quick. How much do you guys as gamers like escort missions? Anybody? Any? No. Crickets. Zero hands going up. Nobody likes escort missions in games. Developers make those, so when they're like, mm, this game's not quite long enough. Oh, let's put an escort mission in, that'll be fun. Uh, said nobody ever. Okay, nobody likes escort missions. So, how about an entire game that's an escort mission? Does that sound fun? Oh yeah, it could be a non-survival horror game and it would still be a horrific experience. And that's what Amy is. It's got the horror setting, but it's an escort mission. And you're escorting a girl with special powers and you don't have any. So really, what's the point in escorting someone who can heal, crawl through vents, do all sorts of things and you're pretty much useless? I think the roles need to be reversed. Amy should be escorting you in this game. That might at least be interesting, but they didn't and we're stuck with this pile of trash. Next up is our good old buddy Nosferatu. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's an SNES release that shouldn't have been. No, it should have basically been aborted right when the developer said, hey, we should make it, Never mind. That should have been the end of it. But instead, we have this game that plays like a roofied out version of Prince of Persia in a horrible setting and horrible as in bats and werewolves and you're creeping along and when I say roofy it's because you move like you're like you're like the zombie in the game but you shouldn't be I mean this makes Mortal Kombat for the Game Boy feel like it's got crisp controls I'm not kidding when you push a button you don't push a button expecting him to jump you push a button and hope he jumps like okay jump come on fella you feel like jump oh there you go thank you thank you very much the premise behind the game is actually kind of cool, but it's got some ridiculous delay. And like I said, if you like Prince of Persia, don't play this game. Prince of Persia is a masterpiece in side-scrolling, platforming, jumping, obstacle-avoiding gameplay. This is the exact opposite. You need tight controls to do it. And the spooky premise and the cool design of the game can't save the horrible gameplay. So you're better off locking yourself in a coffin and letting someone else play this one. Next up is by our good friends at LJN, the classic developer on the NES, the 8-bit glory days, the people who created some of the worst games you'd ever experience, and Friday the 13th on the NES is one of them. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong, people pick this up every Halloween, it's like some weird nostalgia trip. But you know what? It's like going to one of those family reunions. You gotta go. You tell fun stories, but you get home and go, <laughs> I'm not sure that was any fun at all. That's what Friday the 13th is like. Now Jason Voorhees is a pretty scary dude, even in 8-bit. But the scariest part about this game is the cryptic fireplaces, the weapons, the caves, the stupid paths to the different cabins. I mean, if you have beaten this game, I hope it's because you received it at a time when gaming was around birthdays and Christmases and you got a game and you're like, well, I guess I'll just play this because I'm not gonna get a game for six more months. If you play this game afterwards, it's because you're a true glutton for punishment. The quality of horror games has gone up so much in the last couple decades, there's no reason to relive this unless you just want to torture one of your friends. That's it. I'm looking at you, Rob. Next up is a game called The Letter. Now, just the thought of writing a letter at this point is horrific. I mean, carpal tunnel starts setting in, you get those little bumps on your fingers. I'm all about typing these days. But you know what? This game was made for the Wii U. It was an underrated system. Maybe it produced an underrated horror game. Nope, it did not. It produced, no joke, one of the worst reviewed games in the history of games. I think on like Metacritic or something, it's like the fourth worst reviewed game ever. Now, it was developed by one single guy who I feel a little bad for 
But I mean, come on. I mean, I, I, you gotta put more effort into this. This game is about a main protagonist named Michael Kennedy who receives a letter from his dad who goes missing after doing a, a new job site. He goes to an off-site job location and basically sends his son a letter and says, I'll probably be dead by the time you read this. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Honestly, that's pretty interesting. Uh, but it ends there. It literally has 1 out of 10, 0 out of 10. It's th everything that could be wrong in a game is I mean, this thing's got glitches, you know. <laughs> Glitches get stitches. Well, this thing is an abundance of this is a Frankenstein of video games at this point It's got glitches. It's got terrible controls. The gameplay is terrible. The story is boring I can't go on and on and on because it's easier to talk about the good things about this game than it is the bad because there are none That's it moving on Next game up is Night Trap, another classic like Friday the 13th, a game that gets played a lot. It got released for the Sega CD, and uh, it was destined for infamy. It was all over the news, people were talking about this game, and you're trying to protect this family, which is more like a frat house from these blood suckers who look more like a bunch of the Three Stooges that are going in in burglar gear, acting like it's home alone with Harry and Marv. The game isn't scary, it's goofy, the acting is horrendous, but it's got this weird charm because it's so bad, but it's not good. It's not good. And you're playing as this peeping Tom on surveillance cameras, trying to catch these goofballs as they're tracking down the family. You're trying to take them down trap doors or whatever means you can get them to fall to their death and save the family at the end of the day. But it's more fun to let the family just get taken out and watch the terrible acting that goes along with it. It's a classic and it's actually worth a play. The only game that I would say is worth looking at because it's just so unique and it really is funny. It's so bad, it's good. But at the end of the day, this game sucks. Like a vampire. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna round out the list for horrific Halloween horror games. Five, I could've done 10, I could've done 15, but we're gonna keep it nice and short for you. Let me know if there's any of these games that you actually played. Let me know what games you love to play on Halloween and what games you got that you were like, I can't believe I actually played it, it's so bad. I love terrible games. They're some of my favorites because they're so bad, they can be good. All right guys, keep trolling, keep rolling, smash the subscribe button, and we'll catch you next week.